Church family. Thank you for joining us today um, for this new video in our Know to Grow series. Um, we are going to be talking today about uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're going to be talking about the gift of tongues and just a little introduction into what those are, what that means, um, especially in the life of a believer. As a Pentecostal church, as a as a church of God denomination, this is something that we believe very strongly in. We believe in the operation of the gifts um, and all that the Lord has for us and all that comes with that. So I want to just kind of dive right in. So when we come to Christ, when we come to that place of salvation, we repent and we ask the Lord to become our, our Savior, what happens is the Holy Spirit comes and he indwells within our heart. But there's something that can happen later in the life of a believer. It can happen sooner. It depends. Um, is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is actually a second work of grace um, that follows after we have come to salvation. And as Christians, uh, this is an encounter where we receive the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8, we see that Jesus promised um, this to his disciples. Um, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Um, also on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, we see in Acts 2, 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And so the baptism of the Holy Ghost is where we are equipped with God's power for his service. Now, the evidence of when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost is when we speak with other tongues. Um, and so it is through this experience that we really begin to understand and eventually operate in the other gifts of the Spirit. Um, one thing that you may notice or you may experience after you have um, been baptized in the Holy Ghost um, with evidence of speaking in other tongues is a deeper prayer life. You're, you're going to see um, that prayer life change. Some people will call it a prayer language when, when you may be praying and you may um, begin to speak in other tongues and it's a wonderful thing I can tell you in my own life I have just the the Lord has just done amazing amazing things and I've been so excited um, at the working of the Holy Spirit in my life I want to read you this um, this is actually from a book uh, it's called Holy Spirit Baptism by Don Basham um, it's a wonderful book if if this is something that you want to to dive deeper into. There's another book that I highly recommend um, by Lester Sumrall. I've been reading it recently and it is a fantastic book on the gifts of the spirit. Um, so I would encourage you to get that if, if that's something that you are interested in. And the baptism in the Holy Spirit clearly adds a deeper dimension to prayer. The ability to pray in tongues brings with it a new spiritual freedom and creates a precious intimacy with Jesus not previously known. When uncertain how to pray in a given in any given situation, the spirit-filled Christian may slip over into praying in tongues with the confidence that such spirit-directed prayer is more effective than his own intellectually guided efforts. As Paul reminds us, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he searches who the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And that's Romans 8, 26 through 27. Um, so once we begin to experience this, you may say, okay, well, so the evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. So what exactly is speaking in tongues? Well, um, we'll dive into that for just a second. So speaking in tongues is a form of prayer where a Christian yields um, to the Holy Spirit and we receive from the Spirit um, a supernatural language. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost is available to everybody. If you are a Christian, if you are a believer, if you have come to faith in Jesus Christ, then this experience is for you. And 
I, I really feel like it's something that every believer should seek. It's not required, um, but it. I can tell you personally, when, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the work that the Lord began to do in my life was just miraculous. Um, I, I began to experience just a deeper, a deeper walk with him. I began to experience, um, just understanding that I felt like the spirit, um, would, would speak to me, um, communicating with the Lord through, uh, through the Holy Ghost. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. And i I'm very blessed to that to have been able to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Acts 2:17 it says and it will be in the last days that I will pour out my spirit on all people. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So it is available to all. He said very clearly that he was going to pour his spirit out on all people, on all flesh. Um, so when we as believers begin to experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, then his gifts will automatically flow. And so one of those gifts is the gift of tongues. Now this gift is for the body and it is in operation, mostly in a corporate um, setting. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, we see, um, and I'm going to paraphrase this. It says, whenever you come together, each one has a hymn, a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, or interpretation. And everything is to be done for building up. So the gift of tongues is a gift of inspiration. Um, and it is to be used to edify or build up the church or the body of Christ. Now, if you've been at RPC um, at all, then you may have at times heard um, an individual give out a message in tongues and then someone would follow with an interpretation. These are one of the gifts of the Spirit that we believe are in full operation today and that they are um, needed. Uh, we need all the gifts of the Spirit working in the body of Christ, in the church, um, and the purpose of it is to edify, to build up, to encourage. Um, and so I hope that this has maybe given you a little bit of a better understanding of, of some of those different things. Sometimes we hear these terms and then we may not really fully understand what, what is what. Um, I know this was just a very basic introduction, but I hope that it gives you um, a desire to maybe learn more. And like I said, um, the books that I mentioned previously would be some wonderful resources uh, for you to for you to utilize in your further study. Thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you have a great rest of the week.